Hello and welcome to our St Michael's Braintree Good Friday Reflections. Over Easter weekend we'll be having a number of services as well as these adults Good Friday reflect Reflections. There will also be a Good Friday Children's and Families service. On Sunday we're going to have two services. At 10am there's our Easter Family Praise and at 6pm we're having an all age tonight, one of our youth friendly services, but it's for adults as well. And we'll be looking at the road to Emmaus. We hope you'll be able to, to join us for some of these. Uh, in general, with our worship on the web, we've tried to launch the services uh, at the beginning of the Sunday so people can pick them up anytime. But over Easter, we're actually launching them at 10 o'clock for Easter Family Praise and at 6 o'clock for all age tonight. Our hope is that a number of us will watch them at the same time, even though in our own homes, and there'll be a sense of us worshipping in that sense together. All of the services will be available after that time though, if you're not able to watch with us. As we prepare for Easter, the joy of Easter day and Jesus rising to life, we feel it's right to pause on Good Friday, to reflect on the price that Jesus paid to deal with our sin. And as we do so, my hope and prayer is that we will love less our sinful ways. So let's pray as we start. Loving Lord Jesus, Thank you so much for what you suffered on the cross for us, for our salvation. As we reflect on the events of that first Good Friday, may the cost you paid for our sin make us both humble and thankful. Amen. Well, let me hand over now to Stephen and Jennifer Bailey who are leading our Good Friday Reflections. Thank you, Nigel, for your welcome. This Good Friday afternoon, we're going to look particularly at uh, St Luke's Gospel, chapter 23 and verse 26 to 44. So you may find it helpful to have a Bible handy to look at the verses we're going to consider and to think over the two readings that we shall have. We will, of course, sing, and we shall pray together. So first let's sing. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. When I survey the wondrous cross the prince of glory died my richest gain I count but loss and poor content
Love demands my soul. My life, my I'm going to read now from Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, beginning to read at verse 26 and reading to uh, verse 38. And as they led him away, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. I wonder what the man who nailed this notice to the cross of Jesus knew what he was doing. Well, he did, of course. He was acting under his instructions, nailed this placard to the cross. But at the same time, he was doing what God wanted him to do. God wanted people to know that this man on the cross was the king of the Jews. The Romans thought uh, otherwise. If anyone rebelled or presented himself as a king, and then they knew how to deal with him, how to humiliate him, how to beat him, how to crucify him, how to kill him. They little cared for God or the person who they were killing. Caesar is triumphant. It is Caesar who is to be honoured. But God says, this is my king. And back in the Old Testament, God says, my kings will suffer. Do you remember King David? When he was chosen to be king, he had to run for his life from King Saul. He hid in mountains, in caves, in desert, in remote places, in fear of his life, and he suffered much. Then, at the end of his life, his son Absalom rebelled against his father and led the whole nation against him. Kings had to suffer. And David wrote these words, and we love them because we can see in them something that happened to the Lord Jesus, but in the first instance, they were something that happened to King David. So I read from Psalm 22. I'm a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. And a little bit further on, 
For dogs encompass me, a couple of evildoers encircle me, they've pierced my hands and my feet, I count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me, they divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Vividly true of Jesus, but David said, that was my experience, kings suffer. And in the end, Paul wrote of King Jesus these words from Philippians uh, chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. A neighbour of ours was awarded, quite rightly, the MBE. He was sent a letter, and a date was fixed in her diary, and she went to Buckingham Palace, knelt before the Queen, and was honoured that way. The Queen, the fount of all honour. And of course she was st uh, stayed and was entertained at Buckingham Palace, but then went home. King Jesus is the fount of all honour. He suffered and he died that we might be honoured, forgiven, acquitted of our sins, justified, reconciled to God, welcomed by him as our Father, sons and daughters of God. But first we were rebels and Jesus paid for our rebellion by dying on the cross. And from the throne of his cross, he honours us who humbly bow before him. Glad that our King is also our Saviour. Just a brief moment of quiet. I'm going to end our quiet now by praying a prayer of thanksgiving to our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. So I turn to that prayer and I will lead us in it. Lord Jesus Christ, we gladly thank you and worship you who by right are King of all men and women everywhere and in every time and in every age. Thank you for paying the price to free us from the just penalty of our sins. Thank you for the privileges and honours you give to all who come to you who died on the cross. Help us to enjoy the welcome our Heavenly Father gives. Please bring the day when we shall see you and our new home in glory by what you have done for us ask this through you who died for us. Amen. We sing now and get a uh, hymn there is a green hill far away. He died that 
his precious blood. taken from Luke chapter 23 verses 39 to 49. One of the criminals who hung there hustled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breath and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. This is the word of the Lord. Now one word, uh, one phrase has been used a great deal in recent weeks is the word unprecedented or the phrase we're living in unprecedented times and we truly are. And people throughout the world are saying that things will never be the same again when the present events are over and that's true. But consider that first Good Friday afternoon, events that we've read recorded by Luke and certainly unprecedented times then and events that meant that things would never be the same again events with consequences for this life but even more so for eternity so look at the centurion in verse 47 now when the centurion saw what had taken place what did he say certainly this man was innocent. One of the criminals in verse 41, what did he say? We are receiving the just reward for our sins, but this man has done nothing wrong. Two quite different people recognizing rightly that an innocent, a righteous man was being crucified in their presence. And what did they see happening around them? And what can we see today? Two things, darkness and the death of Jesus. In verse 44 we read, it was about the sixth hour noon and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, 3pm, when the sun's light failed. And this was not an eclipse, it wasn't possible for it to be so, but God caused this darkness. Nothing is happening here that is outside God's plan for the salvation of the world, a plan that had been made before time began. I can remember an eclipse when as darkness came everything was deathly quiet, no birds were singing, it was cold, it was eerie, it was abnormal, but only for a really, really short time and all was right again. 
but this was lengthy darkness and in this darkness Jesus is on the cross dying dying for the sin of the whole world every sin was being put on Jesus during these dark hours later in time when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost he spoke of the great day of the Lord quoting the prophet Joel that that day would be preceded by the sun turning to darkness and God couldn't turn his back on sin as though it had never happened there had to be a consequence and the consequence of sin is death and so on this great day the sun turning to darkness we see that God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners Jesus died for us during these darkest of hours ever Jesus is taking on himself the sin of the whole world the darkness speaks to us of God at work dealing with sin it was the only just and fair way that God could make it possible for us to be in a perfect loving relationship with himself God loved us but he could not ignore sin so Jesus takes it all not a part of it but the whole of it on himself in these hours of darkness Jesus took on himself the sin of the dying criminal who recognized who Jesus was and remember me he prayed and Jesus said today you will be with me in paradise so it was my sin it was our sin which nailed him to the cross so that today when we come to him sorry for our sin he forgives us cleanses us and makes us righteous in God's sight and Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians what had happened during these dark hours for God made him Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him the centurion and the dying thief then heard the final prayer of the human life of Jesus and saw Jesus die and so we read in verse 46 Jesus called out with a loud voice father into your hands I commit my spirit and when he said this he breathed his last and traditionally these words were a quiet evening prayer used by Jews but Jesus calls the words out with a loud voice committing himself to his father but with the sense of not a final groan but someone has written that they have a sense of a shout of exclamation and triumph it's a prayer of trust in his father at the time of death Jesus knew his father's will to the last detail he'd been there in the planning and nothing was happening that had not been planned for and Jesus had lived to the plan laid out by his father he'd come into our world born to die and Luke's gospel has been bringing us to this point in time pointing to Jerusalem pointing to the cross and Jesus work is now complete and so he speaks to his father and he entrusts himself totally into the safe hands of his father God and then simply Luke says he breathed his last so by mid afternoon on the first Good Friday the salvation of the world was accomplished at the cross of Christ and the words of John 3:16, the gospel in a nutshell are true for all those who believe or put their trust in God's only Son for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes or trusts in him will not perish but have everlasting life and one last reflection whilst the thief on the cross the centurion the crowds the acquaintances and the women who followed Jesus from Galilee are involved in the happenings here out on Calvary life is carrying on in the temple it's an important time the time of celebrating the Passover but look back at the words in verse 44 and the curtain in the temple was torn in two 
Other Gospels tell us that he was torn in two from top to bottom. Only God could have done that. And on the Day of Atonement, once a year, this curtain was drawn back. Once a year the High Priest would enter the most holy place in the Temple. Once a year a sacrifice for the sin of the people was offered. Now on this day the holiest of all places is exposed for all to see, for all to enter. No more need for once a year sacrifices only. The one perfect sacrifice has just taken place on the cross. The book of Hebrews tells us that as those who trust in all that Jesus has achieved on the cross, we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. We used to sing a song, there is a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. A door has been opened that we may go in. A Calvary's cross is where you begin when you come as a sinner to Jesus. Good Friday, an unprecedented time. And the centurion's words in verse 47, when he saw what had taken place, he praised God. So may we, as we are sorry for the sin, our sin, which took Jesus to the cross, praise God, because on that first Good Friday, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And a prayer together. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. We praise you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for finishing the work that you came to do and for doing everything that is necessary for us to be in a right relationship with you. Thank you that your work was complete and perfect. We thank you that on the cross you were paying in full the price for our sin. So as we ask for cleansing and forgiveness, we know with certainty that the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Help us to see the extent of our sin and the greatness of the love of Jesus dying for us on that first Good Friday. Amen. We're going to sing a song together now which reflects on all that happened on the cross but at the same time there's an element of praise in it. Hallelujah, what a saviour. We're going to sing together, Man of Sorrows. Mary. 
Let's pray together. First let's pray for the world that God so loved and the world for which Jesus died. Merciful God, creator of all, have compassion on all who do not know Jesus Christ. By the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ, gather them into one fold of the one shepherd who died to take away the sins of the whole world, Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards humankind sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross so that all people should follow the example of his great humility. Grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also have our part in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A final song, My Lord, What Love Is This?
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always.